Hey folks, thanks for stopping by the channel. Today we are up at my off-grid property in beautiful northern Arizona. Today I'm going to show you how to build a simple do-it-yourself small tank stand. I'm going to take you over and show you what I'm talking about right now. All right, so this is the tank stand that we're going to be building. It's going to look a lot nicer than that when we're done. This is pretty old. So why would I build a tank stand like this? Well, in my case, up here off-grid, I'm not here throughout the summer and I'm trying to grow trees here and I'd like to set up some sort of auto watering system. So you might ask, why would I need to build a stand for a tank like this? I could just set the tank on the ground. Yes, I could just set the tank on the ground. However, there is a neat benefit to raising it up off the ground. By raising this tank up off the ground, I now have the ability to use gravity to feed water at any point below the spout here. I don't need a water pump anymore to send water to my trees. Now I'm going to go over the dimensions and the material list for this project. Okay, this project is going to require two eight foot long four by fours. I use pressure treated in this case I did not, but in my others I do. Five eight foot long two by 10 boards and a piece of either three quarter inch plywood, OSB, or something you could probably buy cheaper that is just as sturdy because this stuff is pretty expensive right now. Three inch screws to tie these boards to the four by fours and two inch screws to tie your top to the boards. You could also get yourself some angle brackets to put here, which would tie in here and here on each corner just for a little extra stability. I did not do that in this case. And this tank has been sitting up here, typically full of water for the last six years. I would also suggest getting yourself a gallon of really good quality primer and paint. In this case, I did not use very good paint for this. On this tank stand, I used very good quality exterior primer paint combo for this project and it's holding up really nicely. I even coated the top, not necessary, but I coated the top with Plasti Dip. Okay, here are the dimensions for this project. An eight foot four by four, cut exactly in half, gives you two legs. Same thing on the other end. An eight foot two by 10, cut in half, gives you four foot. Do the same thing on both sides. In the front here, this is 37 inches. 37 inches, both ends. And then two underneath for a little extra support, 37 inches, 37 inches. As you can see, I built the front and the back end first by lining up this 37 inch board with the edge of the four x four. And then when I was ready to put these two side boards on, I just lined it up with the edge here and slap them together and it fits these tanks perfectly. Okay, now we're gonna hop on Old Red, drive over to the project site and start building. Okay, so there's my camp over there and here is the work site. My trusty helper laying down on the job. We're gonna end up using the trailer as my workbench today. And because we are off grid, we need the use of a generator to power my saw. Okay, so this is an eight foot four by four, but it's been sitting out in the sun for a while. I don't know if you could see the twisting in this four by four. It's dried out, it's uh, changed its shape a little bit, and it has shrank a little bit. So you're gonna wanna make sure that you are uh, basically measuring half of whatever the length of this board is. It's supposed to be eight feet long, but uh, after drying out, it's now uh, one eighth shy of eight feet. So just make sure you cut the board exactly in the middle. Okay, so I'm taking my measurement, making my mark and cut. All right, so there's one side. You're gonna do that twice. Okay, so a good example. This board right here is eight feet and one half inch long. It's a little extra, 
The last one was just under eight feet. So you wanna make sure you have a good solid measurement for four posts. Okay, you're gonna cut two pieces of two by 10 at 37 inches long. Okay, now do that one more time. Okay, now we're gonna measure and cut the sides. Okay, that's one side. We're gonna do that one more time. Okay, so aside from the top, which I'm currently using as a workbench, that is all the lumber and cuts we need to make to make this tank stand. I'm going to pre-drill everywhere I'm gonna put a screw to prevent any further cracking at the ends of the boards. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure you use a drill bit that is slightly smaller in diameter than the screw you're gonna use. All right, we're gonna start pre-drilling the small end boards first because this is the side that we're gonna to put together first. All right, so starting with the small side first, we're gonna go ahead and match the uh, two by 10 to the side of the four by four post and the top of the four by four post, which I've done right here. And then we're gonna start putting it together. Okay, so for the bottom board here, on my other one, I have the top of the bottom board right at 24 and a half inches from the bottom. Seems to work out pretty good for that tank, so that's what I'm gonna do here. All right, so match the top of your board to the line we just drew at 24 and a half inches. Match up the side here and start putting it together. Okay, that's what one end looks like. We're gonna do it one more time. All right, so both of our ends are completed. They're assembled. Now we're gonna work on the sideboards. What I've done is I've measured back an inch and a half on each end of the board to account for this piece of wood right here because this board is gonna go right here. And we don't wanna drill into this, we wanna drill into the post. So I measured back, marked it, and pre-drilled my holes where I need them to be. We're gonna go ahead and do that three more times. All right, so we're about to put this whole thing together um, it's a lot easier to do this if you have a helper, but I don't. I have a four-legged helper, but she's not much help. So I'm going to have to put this together on the ground. It helps to use your little square to square this thing up before you drill it all together. All right guys, there you have it. The main portion of the structure is finished. All I have to do is trim it to fit, put the top on, paint it, and we're done. I won't get to doing that till tomorrow. We're starting to run out of daylight here. 
But uh, I want to show you one thing real quick. On the two long sides, I did go ahead and put three screws into the end of this board here. Now, it's not a really good idea to put screws into the end of a board, but if you do it at an angle, instead of going straight into the board, so pre-drill pre your hole at an angle like this, throughout the, the side of the board here, it gives the screw something to grab onto to pull tight. Otherwise, if you drill straight in, it's probably just gonna end up just spinning in place once you get down to the bottom of the board here. So put them in at an angle if you're gonna do that. If you're not gonna do that, you might be, be better off just putting some uh, little angle brackets in right here, just to give it a little extra stability. But uh, yeah, we're running out of daylight right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and call this a day and I'll pick back up with you guys in the morning. Okay, so it's the following day. It's beautiful and absolutely sunny out here. A little windy, but not too bad. All right, so there's our base structure right there. We're gonna go ahead and put the uh, top on right now. Set it up there, see how, to, how out of square this thing is, because I'm sure it is. I have two good edges on this piece of OSB. You can tell by the green here. So that's factory square cut there. This used to be a full sheet of, of uh, OSB. So I'm gonna go ahead and line that up on one of the corners, try to square this thing up, and then I'll end up taking my measurement and cutting the, uh, the OSB to fit the top here. All right, so what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna take that last two by 10, we're gonna cut it at 37 inch lengths and put one board here and one board here for extra support. Okay, now that we have our two boards cut, we gotta take a couple of measurements over here. So because this is 48 inches, you're gonna put a mark at 16 and 32. That gives you a good even split across 48 inches. Then we'll take our speed square and wherever we put a mark, we're just gonna go ahead and draw a line here that tells us where to put our screws in. We're gonna pre-drill these holes as well. Now ideally, you'd wanna use joist hangers beneath each one of these boards that I'm gonna put across here to help support the weight of whatever you're gonna put on top and not just relying on screws in the end of the board but I don't have any. I do, however, have some, uh, a bunch of hurricane ties laying around and this will help add some stability, but you're better off using four joist hangers for this. All right, there it is. It's just about finished. It's all put together now. It's looking pretty good, looking pretty good. So, now all I'm gonna do is paint it, put a couple of coats of good exterior paint on it. Then I'm gonna paint that tank black to prevent algae growth. And then put that tank up there somehow. And that'll be the end product. I'll show you what that looks like here, right at the end. All right, so there's the finished product right there. I think it came out pretty good. I'm not too sure about the color. <laughs> Thought it would be slightly darker than that, but other than that, I think the whole thing came out really nice. Um, so, all I gotta do now is just hook up a uh, battery powered timer, some drip line, fill this thing up, and I've got a nice uh, auto watering system for these trees I'm gonna plant over here. Anyways, that's it guys. Tell me what you guys think down in the comments. Um, you don't need to build something like this for a, a, just a water tank. I mean, you can use that uh, stand for multiple other things. And it's extremely strong. Um, my other water tank stands are proof of that seven years later, so. Yeah, so there's your DIY water tank stand, step by step. Pretty simple. All right, you guys.
take care, be safe, and I'll see you in the next video.